Hello, this is Bill Fisher. In this Adobe Animate demo, I will cover importing and editing audio, reducing points for better playback in the editor, layering multiplane scenes, animated loops, scene transitions, and copying and pasting frames. Here's a layout of a scene featuring civil rights activist John Lewis that was drawn by my colleague Susan Bonner. As you can see, I have a layout from Susan uh, already in uh, the layers that we will need to animate. The first thing I'm going to do is import the audio by selecting File, Import to Library. I'm using Scratch Audio that will be replaced later. Then I'm going to find the audio. My preferred audio format is dot wave. Now that the audio has been imported into the library, I will be able to find it here. It's the narrator dot wave file. I'll add a layer for it. Put that up top. Call it narration. If I choose this frame, over in the uh, properties under the sound panel I can choose that narrator wave file and it will place it right in there. I want to make sure that it's set to stream not event start stop but stream that way it will always um, correlate with what's happening on the timeline. This piece of narration is about eight seconds long and we're working at 24 frames per second. So I need to go down around 200 frames and select a column, right click or control click and insert just a frame, not a keyframe because I'm not changing anything. I'm just making space on the timeline. I want to do a uh, nice little transition between this text and this text. And so I think I'm going to put a little extra space between this dialog. So I will put my cursor right here. Click that keyframe. Control click, right click, split audio. And now I can move this down a little bit if I want to have a little bit more space. That also means that I will need to make extra space down here at the end so we don't chop it off. Now as I move that, you'll notice that the uh, original audio also still plays. So I simply need to go to where I want it to stop and insert a blank keyframe and that will stop that audio. Hands in his pockets, change in his heart. If I choose this icon right here, I can do a little bit of volume adjustment. Put a point here, this is my left and right channel. Maybe one here. And perhaps I want to control soften that uh, that transition from this to this quieter and I click OK and that will be evident in the playback. Now I'm going to check uh, the complexity of these illustrations. Uh, by that I mean the number of points that we have. I think I'll check this area right here if there are too many points, um, playback will be slow in the editor. So I'm going to choose this subselection tool. Go in here and check some of these areas. You can see there's a lot of points there, probably more than we need. So I'll select the regular selection tool, choose this area, and I'm going to click this smooth tool right here a few times. So it doesn't really get any simpler and it 
still gives me shapes that I want to have. And now you can see if I go in here, there should be fewer points. Sometimes I will just try to manually eliminate some. Now I'd like to set up uh, this scene just a little bit differently. These silhouettes are all on one layer. And I think what I'd like to do is split them into three layers. In order to do that, I will unlock it, turn off its mask. I'm going to select this one and this one. I'm going to cut them. Command X. Make a new layer. And Command Shift V. Paste them in place. And now they are on their own layer. Now that I have these two silhouettes on their own layer, I'm going to select both of them, control click, and convert them to a symbol. I will use a movie clip symbol and I will call them silos one to match the uh, layer that it's on. And now you can see they're all in one symbol, and I can animate that symbol uh, as a small group like this. I'm going to quickly do that to these other layers as well. I'm going to start animating now uh, some of these transitions. Uh, this text right here, hands in his pockets, change in his heart, does not really need to appear until later. Uh, the first part of this. Uh, narration is really there for sight impaired persons to describe the scene for them. Hands in his So you can see it starts to say hands in his pockets here. I'm going to start them pretty early though. And what I'm going to do is make a new layer and call it markers. And then I can put a uh, insert a uh, keyframe here. It's just a blank one. And then over here in properties I can give it a name and I can say start hands and that's a note to myself so that I know kind of where to start that audio so let's find it uh, we're looking at the uh, narrator text and narrator text box okay I can select both of those and I can move them down here to where it says start hands the bridge hands in his pockets so I start those as soon as I can because I want to give people the most amount of time that possible to uh, to read that hands in his pockets so it starts a little bit early Right, I'm going to start doing uh, something called a Ken Burns effect, which is going to simulate a slow camera truck in. First thing I'm going to do is identify the layers that I'm going to animate first, which is going to be this silo one. I'm going to put a slight pause in at the beginning. So insert a keyframe there. And then I'm going to end this move before that text pops up. So I have a slight pause there as well. Now at this point, I'm going to scale this up just a little bit. Bring it down about here and maybe forwards okay now I will insert a classic tween and you will be able to see that it simulates a camera move he led that march over the bridge hands 
I have four planes that I have animated now. Uh, this group of characters, a second group, a third group, and then the bridge. What I did is I scaled them differently and positioned them differently. The foreground uh, elements were scaling more and moving further because they are closer to the camera, and that creates the illusion of depth. Let's play this back and see what it looks like. He led that march over the bridge. And now you can see that it playback was not very good. So what I'm going to do is a quick test movie. So I choose the command key and the return button. He led that march over the bridge, hands in his pockets, change it. And then I can see it run a little bit more smoothly. I've made a special effect here in a separate file. This could be a different animator working on the project at the same time. And in this file, uh, I can take the frames like this, select them all, copy frames, different than regular copy, and then go back to my main animation, insert a new symbol. This needs to be a graphic symbol because it needs to run on the main timeline and sync with everything else. Pocket special effect. Okay, now I can control click here, paste those frames and you see it's in here now. Now that I have this new symbol, I can make a layer for it. Call it the pocket effect. And I will put a keyframe where I think it will start. And I can drag that effect onto the stage there. Get it oriented. And let's see how that looks. I don't like this framing. I wish that more of these effects were showing. So I'm going to lock all the layers except for the pocket effect and these uh, silhouettes and select all, move them all over a bit. Let's see how that looks. I've added a little bit of sound and this is the final animated segment. Let me play that for you. He led that march over the bridge, hands in his pockets, change in his heart. Now you can hear that uh, the metronome was left in a couple of those audio segments. All right, I'd like to review uh, how I manage the focal points as we move through this very short segment. We start out with this slow camera truck into John Lewis leading the protesters, and then that tends to bring the focal point, I think, around the center. So then I bring the text in right there where I'm already looking. And then as the text moves to the left, it will move the viewer's eye over in that direction. And then I bring this special effect right there where we're already looking. And as these animate and spread out, uh, we can start to move our eyes over to here. Then I eliminate everything and then I start over. This brings my eye back to the left, how these things build out. And then I bring this text in from the left over to the right 
where I then can transition to this focal point, which is John Lewis's face. That is the end of the demo for today. Thanks for watching.